Hello, welcome back to the Archoria Pigments 3 tutorial. Today we're dealing with functions, which is a fancy word for basically saying advanced envelopes and LFOs. All of the functionality that we're going to see today is largely covered in the other tabs. It's just that we get extra stuff. Let's dive in and see what we've got. So what we're looking at at the moment is an LFO view. And you can see down below we have the LFO option. We also have envelopes available, but just for the moment, we're going to deal with LFOs. And what we get with functions that we don't get over on the LFO page is the ability to draw really complex shapes. So I'm just left clicking and you can have up to 64 nodes in a function. We've got three of them to choose from. And you can see I can tab between the three functions. And I'm going to map this to good old filter cutoff because why wouldn't I? Now you can see at the moment when I've drawn the um, the modulation ring, it's unipolar. I can engage bipolar mode and then suddenly the ring is oscillating around a central point. We've already talked about the difference between bipolar and unipolar. Bipolar literally doubles the range. So if we had um, a pitch range, for instance, it might go from C2 to C3 in unipolar and C1 to C3 in bipolar. It, it doubles the size of the modulation range. Now you can see the poor Billy Good LFO curve. Let's have a look what that sounds like. If I want to get rid of any of these nodes, I can right click on them and we simply do that. Now, can you see that this node over here is currently selected? This is point number five. I should call them points, really. That's what Archoria call them. Nodes is just my word. So you can see that point five is currently highlighted and all of these um, values down here are editable. So if I click and drag in the time box, then you can see me editing that point or I can pick the thing up and move it around. And just as with the other modulation curves, we can do all sorts of fancy adjustments to them. We also have a huge bank of presets to play with. Looking at that thing at the moment, it's actually difficult to just completely throw it away. There's no clear button to, um, to delete your operation. But what you can do is go into the presets and choose any of these options. Uh, there's an init here if you just want to completely throw everything away. And you can see that some of them, the step sequences down below, are pretty intense. Let's see what that sounds like. Now that would be really interesting mapped to pitch. We would get something approaching a step sequencer. I don't know why I took cut off away. Let's have both of those things at the same time. You see that the magnetize option is on at the moment. This is basically like a snap grid. Like I said, we've got this 64 point um, grid that we can play with here. If I pick one of these points up and start dragging it, you'll see that it snaps to points. There we go, just pinged to that point. If I turn magnetize off, we get completely fluid motion with it. And you can also scale it. At the moment, it's scaled to one, which is basically a direct equivalence. But if I pull the scale uh, knob back, you'll see the lines start to diverge from the points. They're getting further and further away. The more extreme the point is, from a percentage perspective, the further away we get from the line. Now, some of the functions in this screen at this point should be coming really familiar to you, and hopefully we don't need to spend too long on lots of them. Sync is nice and simple. You can either have three different types of sync operation to the host tempo or a raw hertz value. Skip over those for the moment. Our gate source, again, we've seen this kind of thing very regularly because um, if I set it into LFO mode and slow it down a little bit, it's running a bit fast at the moment, then if I make it go slow enough, it's going to get, it's getting about this far before the LFO uh, causes it to re-trigger. Remember the LFO coming up towards zero is going to be the point when there and there is when the LFO fires and you can see it basically re-triggering the function in keyboard mode. You know, we're manually responsible for that stuff. 
Now, having said that we're manually responsible for it, this thing is basically free looping because our play mode is currently set to loop. If I turn it to one and press a key, it's going to complete one cycle of that function and then stop. If I set it to run, uh, it won't re-trigger when I hit a keyboard, it's now free running. So it's basically I'm jumping on to the LFO as it's cycling freely. So all of that is the LFO mode. Let's have a look at what we've got available in envelope mode. I think I've actually just found a bug. Um, if you're in LFO mode and you have the run play mode option, when you head over to the envelope, function doesn't work. If I switch LFO to one and then flip to the envelope, you can see everything's absolutely fine. Let's have a look at loop mode. Yep, that works too. But run doesn't. I'll have to uh, let the guys at Arturia know. Let's um, head back to one. And then at least we can see the envelope operating. So here's our sustain point. Let's pick envelope ADSR. And now we've got something very familiar. So here, slow it down. There we go. Now, obviously, because this is a function, we've still got 64 nodes to play with. But just bear in mind that S is the important one. That's your sustain point. And the primary difference between envelopes and LFOs is the envelopes, What when you engage loop mode, you select a zone over which the envelope will iterate. So when I hit a key, it's going to play until it gets to this line and then it'll loop in this little internal zone. This is points four to seven. I can pick these things up and drag them. Pretty straightforward. Everything that you've seen up until now has been in standard draw mode but we can engage the pencil to allow us to draw in a step sequence method, or we can have ascending sawtooths or inverted ones. And then obviously from that point onwards, do whatever we want. Finally, over on the, over on the right hand side, we've got a randomized function. I don't bother with this to be absolutely honest. I like to be in control of what I'm doing, but basically I'm clicking on this little die and dragging up and as I do it basically just randomizes everything and when I let it go it resets the points See, it's like a, a dynamic randomization function but it's only actually gonna perform the randomization when I let go so if I change my mind drag all the way back down to zero again and let go it doesn't perform any operation that's functions dealt with hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit the like button see you for the next time thanks a lot